Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Dead Rising playthrough. After our trip to the Twilight Zone, uh, we are going back to overtime mode. So at this point in the game, we need to find as many queens as possible in order to... In oh. Order oh, wait! Oh, Frank died! Sorry, that's, that's the end of the game. We got the bad ending. So, Frank is dead now. Although, not, not really. If you get killed by the Special Forces, you get taken to their helicopter... And uh, this is actually one of the endings we were talking about before, where yeah. actually I think technically Frank's wearing more clothes right now because those boxer <laughs> shorts definitely cover up more than that than that wrestling uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a mini game. Yeah. Oh, uh, this mini game's frustrating though because it's hard to tell when how much moving is moving too much for them to notice you. You know. Also, he glows red like he's radioactive for some reason as well. If they manage to spot you, uh, they actually knock you out for a few hours. They'll actually like beat you and, and knock you unconscious. And that's how you can kind of forward the time if you're trying to speed up the calendar or speed up the, uh, the clock, you know. I don't think speeding up the clock does anything in overtime mode, so it's effectively just like yeah, it, it's just a waste of time in overtime. But if you're doing like the 72 hour day cycle, yeah. it can help get the helicopter to show up quicker. That is true, yeah. So yeah, then you can you can break out and sneak away. That was actually the first time I'd ever done that. Oh yeah, and the helicopter just disappears. You know, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't bother to check their cargo. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, the best way to get the queens is um, actually, as we were saying before, to drink orange juice. Because, like, you can find the, the queens randomly in certain zombies. Because certain zombies will have, like, be waving their hands in the air. And, the, like, they just don't care. Uh, did, but, they, did they take all your stuff? Yeah, they did take all my stuff. So I also went and picked up all of my stuff as well. Between uh, going there and coming back. Ah, okay. But one of my favorite things about the game, though, is, is that um, there are blenders. If you put two different food items into a blender, smoothies will pop out, which give you different buffs. If you put orange juice and orange juice into the blender, you get the smoothie that attracts bees. So you can get the a bunch of queens really easily that way. Oh, okay. I don't know why mixing orange juice and orange juice gets something different than orange juice, but you know what? We don't We don't ask questions in this franchise. Or at least when we do, we're very disappointed with the answers. And it's relevant to this video, but uh, there is one drink you can mix called Spitfire. I don't remember the ingredients for it, but uh, normally when Frank doesn't have an item in hand and you okay. go into first person or third person view and you pull the gun trigger button, uh, Frank will spit. He'll actually like spit at the zombies and stuff and he'll just go... Pleh. It doesn't do anything to them, really. Unless you get the Spitfire drink, in which case it makes Frank spit deadly. And it actually, like, damages and kills the zombies, and it can actually hurt psychopaths as well. And my biggest pro tip for the final boss, if you want to make him a complete chump, a complete joke, because he stun the spit stun locks him, is to get Spitfire before the final boss. <laughs> Just keep spitting on him and you'll win no problem. Yeah, because the final boss is relatively hard because you don't have any items during it. So mm. if you have the Spitfire perk on before the boss starts, it'll stay there, though. And then you... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> How much damage does the spit do to bosses? Because I've never tried it on any of them. Eh, good enough. It's good sort enough? of like a handgun. Okay. Why is spit at better than a handgun? <laughs> because it's Spitfire. It just does something to you. Spitfire... You'll be caught up in it. Ew. <laughs> okay. So the, 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 the tunnel is the escape route. Okay. Pretty much, yeah. And uh, Isabella has a pheromone that will keep the zombies away from us. So that's how we're going to be able to walk through there, pretty much. Nice. Now get dressed, Frank. This is getting creepy. He's wearing more clothes than he was before! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they jump cut, don't they? Uh... Um, yeah, you do jump cut, so you don't have any other chance to get items. 
before after you hand the last queen to Isabella. So So make sure you pick up your stuff if you got caught like a dumbass the way Ted did. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, granted, if you know a decent route to get to all the different items on the in the mall, you'll have plenty of time. So you can look around for good boss weapons and stuff like that in the meantime. Right. We've got to go in there. So anyway, we have to we have to brave our way through the convention smell if we want to escape the zombie-ridden mall. It probably would smell better than a con by day four, though. I would have to imagine. I wouldn't be alive right now if your shot hadn't worked. How do you know that? <laughs> like, how do you know exactly how long you're going to take to zombify? I mean, the game knows, but how do you know? <laughs> I mean, they don't, <laughs> is the thing. I don't think they, they don't really elaborate too much on how, like, how much time you, Frank has. It's just said that, oh, he's resistant to the zombification, so it takes longer for him than other people. They do kind of go into some of the, like, details about the, the anti-zombie drug in Dead Rising 2, because, like, there are a bunch of people who were bitten but didn't turn, and so they have to take a zombie drug called Zombrex in order to keep themselves from becoming zombies. <laughs> and let me guess, it's a health insurance thing, right? Um, not exactly health insurance, but the company that makes it is evil. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think one of the promotional things for, uh, Isabella, can we come down, please? <laughs> Uh, but one of the promotional things for Dead Rising 2 was they made a, like, a website for Zombrex, like a, like a company website for it, uh. which was pretty, pretty funny. If you, I think it might still be up, and if it's not, I'm sure there's an archive somewhere that has it. Dead Rising 2 is a good game. What's the name of that, like, um, that resistance group that's, like, combating Zombrex that's, like, uh... Oh, it's, like, Cure or something like that? No, Cure, Cure, yeah. Because I remember... Because it was a thing at E3 when Dead Rising 2 was coming out. Uh, at E3, they actually had this thing where, like, they had zombies tied to, like, chains uh, at the Capcom booth, and they were just kind of, like, reaching at people, and uh, the... And you had, like, these Cure protesters with, like, speakerphones going, like, this inhuman treatment of zombies has to stop... <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, because I oh uh, yeah because they're like zombie rights protesters because they're trying <laughs> yeah, to make yeah. I don't know like I mean okay so here's the thing about Dead Rising One versus Dead Rising Two Dead Rising Two is definitely a better gameplay game I would say than this absolutely mm -hmm. but the story has no idea what it's doing <laughs> effectively like it is basically like it's all over the place. Whereas, like, this game definitely has a message it's trying to tell, and, like, it's consistent with it. Some of the plot points are dumb, but the message is very clear. Dead Rising 2 is trying to have a message, but it's just very inconsistent. Ah. Uh. Anyway, you can get through this whole area without having to kill anyone, but what fun is that, right? <laughs> At least I mean, you don't have to worry about Did we about talk Isabella. about the zombie one? Oh yeah, yeah, we did because you can like shuffle on top, <laughs> on top of them. Oh, I don't even mean uh, like climbing on top of them. Like, there's actually a skill where if you hold the X button down, or square in this case, um, Frank will pretend to be a zombie, and he'll oh, imitate Oh, that a one! Yeah. Oh my god. And when you pretend to be a zombie, they don't they don't attack you. <laughs> they just walk right by you. Hey, Frank. <laughs> that works. Yes, it yeah. works. <laughs> the thing is, is that you walk as slow as the zombies do, though, which yeah. is literally like you like shuffle along at maybe an eighth of your normal speed. Yeah, you can't get anywhere, really. Yeah, it's it's more a joke than anything else. Um, and there, there's an achievement for like walking a certain amount of in-game distance using the zombie <laughs> walk. And the easiest way to do it is to just like when the escape tunnels are empty at a certain point, it's just like hold the button and then just stand there for like a good three minutes while you slowly get to the in-game distance. <laughs> and then you get the achievement. It's easy, it just takes forever. Oh god. Yeah, what you're supposed to be doing right now is holding Isabelle's hand and um, walking through these guys, but 
The hand-holding controls are a little wonky, so I just prefer to machete my way through instead. How wonky are we talking? Fable 3 wonky? Um, so like, if you move too fast, you'll break off of her effectively. And, but if you move too slow, like, your turning's really weird. So... Uh. I won't say Fable 3 Walkie, even though I haven't played Fable 3. But I know it's a Peter Molyneux game, so that's at least a 6 on the Walkie scale. Just by that alone. In, 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 uh, in Fable 3, actually, the control is fine when you're hand-holding. The oddball thing is that, like... It's it's like your hands are magnetically attracted to each other rather than actually holding each other. They'll constantly separate just slightly and then yank back toward each other. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Why do you have to hold hands in Fable? I just have to ask. Uh, it was supposed to be something that they added to the third game to give you something else to do in terms of like. Um, companionship question mark with the NPCs <laughs> because in in Fable 2 and Fable 3 you can like have romances with NPCs but well be, any random NPC but because they're just any random NPC they don't have dialogue uh, well they have like yeah. canned voice dialogue but Yay! but it's like the same <laughs> small handful of lines so you like do silly emotes at them to communicate <laughs> Like it's Animal Crossing? <laughs> something like that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you, and sometimes you take them on dates or quests or something, and you have to walk with them and hold their hand and, and run through Bower Stone or whatever. Yeah. Cute. If we can get that gate open. Is Peter Mullen you still making games? Because I feel like he disappeared pretty much. Uh, there was some sort of Kickstarter um, scandal involving him, and I haven't heard anything from him since. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it's too bad because Fable 2 is pretty good and Fable 3 is slightly worse Fable 2 which by extension means it's pretty good if you know not as good now I definitely like let me how am I trying to say this like there are definitely like those auteur game designers that have kind of a bad reputation for a lot of people and, like, Peter Molyneux, I always thought that, you know, his games had problems, but out of ambition. Versus someone like David Cage, who just, it felt like he didn't know how to write. <laughs> so. <laughs> I will still defend Black and White. Black and White's fantastic. I, was, I watched a retrospective about that game, and it looked really, really interesting from what I saw. It was, like, what I wanted Spore to be from what I saw of the game. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Oh yeah, it's very easy to get yourself killed at this upcoming point if you're being too hasty. Even if you do what you're supposed to do and let the zombies in so that the special forces are distracted when you grab their tank. Uh, because, like, sometimes the special forces will just ignore you and <laughs> then they shoot you down anyway. And because there are actually zombies here, it's easy to get caught and then die. Although, don't do what I'm doing right now and wait for Isabella, because I'm pretty sure you can get on the tank without her, and the game will just keep on going. Although I don't know why Isabella isn't running to the tank, which was the plan. Isabella, <laughs> what are you doing? Man. I guess that's why you, get, you hold hands in this game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing right now, though. Were you trying to get eight, 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 eight Oh yeah, I wanted kills? 8k. I really wanted 8k. So that that's what I'm doing. <laughs> wait, hold on. Hold on, wait for it. It's over 8,000! What, 8,000? There's no way that can't be right, can it? 8,000 is the actual number he was supposed to say in... Yeah, but episode. nine matches the left flaps better. Yeah. Oh wait, I was wrong. You do need Isabella in the in the truck. Never mind. Oh yeah. So anyway, um, are you ready for a final boss fight that has nothing to do with any of the gameplay we've had up till this point? Am I? <laughs> it's almost like we're playing Kirby or something. No. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. I mean, granted, I do think that fighting a tank is a good 
ending like a good one of a good final boss for a Dead Rising kind of game. I just wish you were fighting a tank like and scavenging items to fight it. Because right. that would feel like Dead Rising versus using a turret gun for no reason. It's like Star Fox where like you have to hit like the side things and the explosions come off and if you hit the middle nothing happens. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. You have to hit its <laughs> headlights cuz the truck is powered by its its headlights. Can't let you do that, Frank West. <laughs> Can't let you brew that, Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> you just see Isabella's face in the corner. Frank, I need some help here. <laughs> Can't let you spread those chicken pots. Although I guess technically uh, the final boss is you playing as Isabella. Yeah, technically, because Frank's yeah. the one driving. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> So, the real hero of the story was Isabella all along. Pretty much. She's the one connected to the plot. Frank's really only here because... Um... Why is Frank here? <laughs> it's covered <laughs> wars, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, that time when he was covering a war where he... He's, he he's here to tell the story truck. of how Isabella daringly manned the turret and killed the tank. Or destroyed the tank. <laughs> Tanks, tanks don't die. Uh, we don't know. This tank could be living. We don't know. <laughs> well, I, I hope not, because the last time Capcom did living tanks, it was Devil May Cry 2. There's a living tank in Devil May Cry 2? Yeah, there's like this demon yeah. parasite yeah. tank, and it's the most boring enemy in the game until you How fight the How is a demon helicopter. parasite tank the most boring hel enemy in the game? I, I, because... You, you just go up to the side of it where it can't shoot you, and you just go, wah, 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 nah. wah, and then, wah, 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 And then you realize you spoke too soon because the demon helicopter appears, and all you can do there is shoot your freaking guns. How do you make a game with a demon parasite tank and have it be bad? <laughs> this is... Capcom managed it. <laughs> How... Wow, Capcom. I am... I am ashamed. I'm ashamed for you. Everyone is when they when when, when De where Devil May Cry 2 is concerned. It's a bafflingly bad game. Did you get Devil May Cry 2 for the Nintendo Switch trademark? No. No. <laughs> the only thing I'm glad as far as them releasing that is concerned is that they released it as a separate game this time, so you don't have to waste space downloading it to get the other two. Yeah, but you also probably will end up paying more. For, because they split it into three, you'll probably end up paying more for well, Devil May Cry 1 and 3, as opposed to getting all three of the games on PS3. Well, they haven't released three yet. So. Well, they will, eventually. They're not going to release 1 and 2 and not 3. Well, yeah. Or if they do, they're dumb. 3 is, <laughs> like, should. ridiculously well-loved, so I can't see any series of events in which they don't release 3. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm really happy that the Switch is getting ports of so much stuff, but I just don't get why, like, the Resident Evil 4 point port is $20 more on Switch than it is on every other console. And also worse. Aside from, <laughs> aside from they can get away with it because Nintendo fans will buy anything. These automated machines are no oh, Colonel Volgan. It was you in there all along. Switch to manual control. Ah, yes. Tanks are no good for fighting wars. You want to know what's good for fighting wars? Zombies. Hey, hey, hey. Welkin in Valkyria Chronicles would like to have a word with you, buddy. Okay, if it's not zombies, then raptors. Actually, you know what? I I haven't played Dead Rising 3 yet, or 4, so I can't say this for sure. But knock on wood here, I think the American government isn't stupid enough to, to use zombies as military weapons. Like I'm gonna, I'm, I'm trusting Capcom's writing here far more than I should, but I think they didn't go that low. Frank, how do you hold that much stuff on you without any pockets? I wasn't hiding. I was mowing them down. <laughs> didn't you didn't see me? Not helping your case there. So. <laughs> I was the guy in the surfbot mask. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you see me shoot that guy 12 times in the face with a shotgun and he didn't even flinch? <laughs> Speaking of, where is my mask? I need it back. That's what drives you in your quest to run. Your quest to hide. 
I'm just gonna let you monologue. <laughs> Yes, I read Most Dangerous Game in High School, too. <laughs> How much do you know about the zombies? Uh, well, they're dead. That's pretty much all you need to know about them, pretty much. I mean, they're zombies, there's not much to say, really. You've seen one zombie movie, you've seen them all, really. They're made out of bees this time, I suppose that's a little different. But it doesn't it, really change the end result, though. I still don't know how they managed that when trying to make meat, though. I don't, I don't get them science people. We're not out of order. You're out of order. <laughs> I so this guy is weird to me because he's like, oh, the government's always been bad, which is why I should keep being bad. Oh, okay. All all right. Also, I love what happens once this cutscene ends. Because you'll notice there's no zombies around. And Frank is on the ground. Oh, but suddenly now they're all there. Okay. Just, you know, a good 300 zombies walked into the room while we weren't looking. Falcon punch! And Frank was able to jump 15 feet in the air <laughs> to get on top of the tank. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it's a Metal Gear Solid final boss. I can feel it. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. the first time I fought this boss, I died a lot, but there's a really easy way to, to win. It's called flash kick about four times in a row, and then yeah, you'll... Yeah, they, they, the guile strategy. <laughs> yeah, see, watch. Flash kick. Ah. <laughs> uh, flash kick. Hand to hand. Flash. That is the basis of all combat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You took down Colonel Vulcan. <laughs> How did you break physics so badly? Now go home and be a family man. <laughs> oh yeah, crowd surfing! <laughs> Woo! Oh man, this is not like the Van Halen days at all. Wait, where's Isabella? <laughs> she's on the she's on the truck. Yeah. She's got her own problems right now. <laughs> oh, cool. I think at this point, trying to kick them is only going to cause you more problems there, Isabella. Yeah. <laughs> well, put, putting your leg down there within reach is a bad idea, just in general. Uh, Frank? Frank? Need to contemplate the existence of war and stuff. Man. Man is zombies, which means zombies... Our, is our, man. <laughs> Dude. Wait a minute. Dude, you have... I missed my soaps! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't set the TiVo! Now I'll never know whether or not Christine marries Hank or his evil twin, Frank. Frank. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Frank, you have a really, really easy way out of this. You're sitting on it. It's a tank. The motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get you. What about the tank? <laughs> so, okay, why does it cut to credits here? Because this game is weird. <laughs> I don't know why. Let me guess. They just decide no, to no, cut no. there and explain the, what happens at the There end. is a, a report after the credits. They do talk about what happened, but... Um, oh, yeah, but it is it is a strange-ass place to cut. I do agree. Yeah, it's a weird ending spot, yeah. Yeah. But I do really like this game. Like, it's... It's, it's, it's a fun little... I wouldn't say it's like a triple A game, but it's a fun little side thing you can do. Yeah, I agree. It's wonky as all hell. Like I think even for so, the time. So 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 were so were most games at the time period though. Yeah, I think even for the time though, it had it was jank. But it also there's not a lot of other games that have a similar feeling to it when you play, which I appreciate. And yeah. the gameplay really spoke to me just in the sense that like yeah, the like the wacky, you know, you can pick up a bench and swing the bench as a weapon, stuff like that's all fun. Mm. But the the learning to play the game and like learn the locations and try to like map your way around the mall and do stuff as efficiently as possible, I found was really really fun. 
and I was surprised by how much I loved playing this because it's not in my typical genre at at all. So well, it, it, you're not a big zombie guy, but I think it helps that this is a game taking the piss out of the zombie shit. Yeah, that's true. It's also it's honestly in terms of like gameplay, it's much closer to a hack and slash than yeah. anything else. Like, a, I, I, I mean, it it also runs on the thing that. Killing zombies is fun. So here's a bunch of zombies. Run around and kill them in whatever shit, stupid ways you can think mm. of. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a sandbox. It's a playground. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I feel like we're probably not going to get a five anytime soon, though, because for one, people are tired of zombies. They people have been tired of zombies since like 2011. So <laughs> the fact that they got to entry four at all is relatively impressive. Yeah, I think the other issue is that Dead Rising is having a bit of an identity crisis. That's true, yeah. The studio that made 2, 3, and 4 actually went out of business. I think Capcom Vancouver, I think, is the one that made I those think games. I so. Yeah, so they would have to get a new team, which honestly I think would probably be the breath of fresh air that the series would need, all things considered. Although, again, since Dead Rising 4 was received pretty fo poorly, I think that they probably will hold back on making a new game. For I want a mod where this ending sequence on PC is replaced with a thriller dance. Oh uh, yeah, you could pro. Uh, <laughs> that would definitely get us copyright uh, claimed. But I would. Well, no, you don't need not the music. We just have them doing the thriller dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, animating that choreography would be a pain in the ass, though. Someone should do it, though. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure somebody's already done it in like a uh, source filmmaker or something like that. So. I mean, yeah, you could rip all the models pretty easily. Uh, Franken, who's the guy in two? Uh, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck, yeah. Frank and Chuck appear in, like, Gmod videos all the time, including, like, moments with Heavy and crap. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. So they could almost certainly do the... <laughs> have them do the Thriller dance. But yeah, it's good. I like it. It's It was a fun tech demo back in 2006. It's still fun to go back to every now and then. And, and Dead Rising 2 is by far the better game in terms of gameplay. Oh, oh absolutely. I love Dead Rising 2. It, it's so fun, like, combining items in that game to make, like, ridiculous weapons. Like, it's even, like, simple stuff, you know? Like, yeah, you can get, like, the wheelchair with the guns on it or, like, the the remote-controlled teddy bear explosions or whatever. But even stuff like, okay, I take a machete and then I put it onto a broom, and so now it's like a like a lance or something like that. I find a lot of fun. <laughs> Mega Man tights. Yeah! So, yeah, so this is all the stuff I got for doing all of these uh i don't know why it was saying i unlocked infinity mode because i already had it but there we go yeah so basically what happens is they they get out somehow they don't really explain under his that. under his belt <laughs> he's not wearing one <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much frank reveals the story to the world the government uh takes some amount of responsibility for their actions effectively but uh, the zombie epidemic does spread beyond Willamette because of Carlito's thing. So. Sequel bait. The memes, Jack. The memes. Although, the the idea that people would forget about the zombie apocalypse, I find a little... I don't know. A little bit much? <laughs> and yet he complained that his belly was not full. Mom, Whoa. I want dessert now! But mom! 